first guest is a talented actress who has worked alongside shape-shifting transformers and martial arts-loving turtles. <laughs> now she's sharing the screen with a half-naked corpse in a new thriller, Till Death. In the theaters and on demand right now. Please welcome the lovely Megan Fox. <laughs> to do anymore. I don't, I, I don't know I, whether to shake your hand. I, we did I, whatever we did. It or was elbow. Weird, okay. I, I, I've been vaccinated, but it's Johnson & Johnson, so that ain't <laughs> I, I did it with Magic Johnson, and he wouldn't do Johnson & Johnson. <laughs> uh, and that, that's a true story. I love the movie. Thank you. And we'll get to that. But first of all, I just have to say, I've never met you before, but I feel like I have, because anytime I go out, I seem to see you or your man. Um, you like healthy juices. I do. I yes. Do. Yeah. I've, I saw you all recently. Hey, do you all coordinate your outfits when you go out? We do, yeah. He, he um, that's something I started with him just because he's such a flamboyant dresser that I can't really pull off the, just like the sweatpants and the, the yoga gear anymore. I have to like st elevate myself to his level. So whatever he pulls, because he's always covered in like grommets, zippers, Sequins. Everything's pink. Everything's glowing. He's like always coming off of a stage show, so I have to kind of, kind of match his what he's doing. So we do coordinate uh, often. You all looked incredible, and I told my girl, I said, I got him, cause you know, in my hometown of Cleveland, mm -hmm. your man's a hero. I know. He's that dude. I know. And uh, I'm watching. I'm saying, baby, look, look. He had bought two pairs of the same kind of shoe in different colors, and he mixed the two shoes. Yeah, it's Doc Martens. He wears like a black one and a white one. That's the day. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, and now you know I'm not lying. I'm telling you <laughs> everything y'all had on. I'm, but but it, it, it looked real cool. Thank you. And uh, wow, I want to ask you about Vegas, because yeah. I've been in your business. I know where you went this weekend. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were, that was a cra every every famous person a lot. Were you in Vegas? No, I didn't you go. I, I'm not that famous. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were there for the fight, and um, they opened a restaurant there, and it was it was hectic. It was wild. Because also, I think it's one of their like their biggest weekend back mm -hmm. since everything happened. So everybody was just there and ready to be chaotic. So it was yeah. a lot. Now, I look at you, and you don't look like the person that would would like that violence. And that, that was a, a horrific ending to the McGregor fight. Does he make you go? No, no, no. I'm, I'm actually a huge UFC fan. I know I have UFC Fight Pass, and I know all the fighters and their backstories, and I've been into it for a few years now. He likes it, but I'm, I'm definitely the one that's, that's more obsessed with it. I was actually at the Conor Khabib fight mm -hmm. a couple of years ago when all of that chaos happened, and everyone had to run. We had to, like, escape when they started jumping the ring. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, and so the, I see the ring girls start running in like their robes, they're running, and I'm like, oh, I better run too if the ring girls are running. <laughs> so then I started running, and it's, it's like madness. My agents are with me, and I look back, and like my agent, Carol, is like being knocked to the ground. Her blonde hair is like flying everywhere, and I'm like, who just knocked Carol over? It was Chris Pratt. He was, <laughs> he was also escaping for his life, and we were all running, and we ran backstage together, and we were like sequestered in one of the fighters' dressing rooms for like an hour before they let us all out of the out of the arena. So that was like my last major UFC experience before I came back for this, for this fight. Whenever it's Connor, it's always insane. Yeah. And you were in that section with all the special people. I was, I was, I mean, I was in a row with Bieber and mm -hmm. Trump was also in my row. Oh! And yeah, and I've never seen Secret Service in person before. So we had like 30 Secret Service with him and he was a legend. That arena like was very supportive of, of Trump when he came in and um, it was just, I was like, I don't know how I feel about it because if someone is a target, then I'm like, I could be harmed like because I'm adjacent to where he is. <laughs> so I was worried about my own safety. That's all I was, I was, I was caring about. But yeah, that was, that, I've never seen anything like that before, but it was crazy. Yeah, and you had just come back from Costa Rica? Yeah, not long ago. We went to, um, do you guys know what Hiawaska is? Oh, yes! Um, oh, come on, this is Jimmy Kimmel's audience. Y'all know ayahuasca. <laughs> so, we, um, Colson and I went to Costa Rica together to do, like, a really deep... And, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but 
Colson is Machine Gun Kelly. Y'all call him Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. But at the crib, she's not, you want a I bottle of water, Machine Gun? <laughs> yes, Colson. Um, <laughs> so we went to, we went to Costa Rica to do ayahuasca like in a proper setting, like with indigenous people. And we were in the middle of the jungle. And I was thinking because the place we went, there's a lot of people like, I don't know if LeBron James has ever gone, but it's like a place where like, they're like, these kinds of people go here to do ayahuasca. So I was thinking it was like glamping or something like that. It's still gonna be like a, some kind of five star experience. And you get there and you really are in the middle of the jungle and you don't get to eat after like 1 p.m. You have to walk a very far distance to get your water. You can't shower because they're in a drought. So you can't use the water, obviously. Like you need to respect the rainforest. Mm -hmm. um, nothing glamorous about it. It's all a part of sort of making you vulnerable so that you surrender to the experience. And the entire thing starts with something called vomitivo. I hope I'm allowed to divulge this, that it's okay that I share, but oh. I'm encouraging it. Um, so you go and we were with 20 other strangers and you all line up at like the, the edge of the rainforest over this weird fence and you go three by three and you drink lemongrass tea until you like by n not your own volition, just vomit everything out of your body. So you so start- So you have to vomit, there's no way around that part. You can't get out of it. And you have to vomit a certain amount before they let you get back with everybody. So you're like cheering on everyone as they like throw up. <laughs> and as like what we do, obviously, we were like, um, I don't I know, I'm not, am I ready to just like throw up in front of all of these people? But it's such a good bonding experience. <laughs> and <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but but that gets you ready to then go into the ceremony that night because you're like, I my vanity is gone. I've just done this in front of all of these strangers, and like now I'm ready to like really open up. So we did it for three nights. It was incredibly intense. I went to everybody's journey is different. The second night, I went to to hell for eternity. Um, yeah, and to just knowing eternity is. Um, like t torture in itself because there was no beginning, middle, or end. So you have like a real ego death. Wait, wait, now, now how do you arrive and understand that that's what the moment is? Because is there a sign, next exit hell? <laughs> is it, I, I mean, it's, I, I was, it's your own psychological hell, basically, is the point of the medicine, right? This is a medicine that goes, it surpasses like anything you could do with talk therapy or like hypnotherapy or any of those things. It just goes straight into your soul and it takes you to the psychological prison that you hold yourself in. So it's, it's your own version of hell. And I was definitely there. Wow, it, it, it's, it's crazy to have that experience and go to hell and then you go to Vegas and sit next to Trump. Uh, <laughs> We'll be right back with more Megan Fox. Weekend at Bernie's was crazy. Wait till you see this. Tell us what we should know about this so I won't end up being a spoiler. I don't want to spoil either. I So it starts, you kind of don't really know what you're watching because you know you bought a thriller, but the way it starts, you're like, where is this going and what, what's going to happen? You see that there's this relationship going on between myself and my husband in the movie and it's clearly toxic and not healthy and something is off, but you don't know exactly what. Um, my character has been in this marriage that's been dead for a long time and she's been having an affair and decides that she can't have the affair anymore. You find out that her husband, who is probably a sociopath, realizes that she's having an affair. And he, what can I say? I can't say He's a sociopath one. and she has an affair with a brother. So uh, you know he go nuts. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes nuts. Now, where did you shoot that? Was that a city in... We shot the whole movie in Bulgaria, but they built everything on stages. So, so that built, wasn't a real fishing crib? No, they, they built a frozen lake, they built a cabin, they built like all that acreage that was covered in snow that was all fake. Snow was made out of paper. Really? That's what they make movies now. I'm sitting at home saying, ooh, I bet her feet are cold. Yeah, no. That's why we didn't do it. They wanted to do it in Russia in the winter, and I was like, nah. Not gonna, not gonna happen. Did Colson come visit you? 
Yeah, yeah. So he, this was in the beginning of our relationship very, very early on, and he's never been, he's going to love how much I'm divulging all of his secrets, but um, he's never been in a relationship before, and so he was really fearful of, like, if I go away for six weeks, am I still going to come back and, like, we're going to be okay? And oh. he had lost his passport riding a motorcycle on the freeway because he wears these insane pants, and he just puts them in, like, he'll put his passport, like, in his sock, and so it'll fall out, obviously. That's a stupid thing. Don't ever do that. And um, he lost lost the passport, and this was during COVID, so we couldn't just get a new passport. So we had to go through all of these hoops. He went through Bernie Sanders finally to get a to get a passport, and he came to see me. But it was a it was a lot of drama. He was there. He came all. It took all this time. He got there for three days. I wrapped, and then we went back. So. <laughs> Would you all thank my lovely guests and make sure you see Till Death? It's in theaters and it's on demand right now. And I'll be back with Jay Farrell. Give it up for. <laughs> Megan. Put on